Across London on 1450 AM and DAB. Smart speaker, mobile app and likearadio.com. This is Like a Radio. From the Sky News Centre at nine, a cabinet minister insists he doesn't know who called a meeting between Boris Johnson and Sue Gray, who's about to release her Partygate report. She's rejected suggestions she initiated the talks about her findings into lockdown breaches at Downing Street, which is due to be shared within days. Nadim Zahawi is defending both her and the Prime Minister. Sue Gray has conducted her report independently. The Prime Minister has never, ever intervened in her report. Sue Gray's integrity and professionalism is beyond doubt. Labour wants an urgent explanation. It looks as if the cost of living gap between the wealthiest and those who are worse off has reached the highest on record. Research by a think tank shows the divide experienced by the richest and poorest tenth of households grew to 1.5% in April. Ukraine's ruled out a ceasefire with Russia and insists only diplomacy can end the war as fighting ramps up in the Donbass. President Zelensky's described the situation in the eastern region as extremely difficult. Joe Biden says monkeypox is something everybody should be concerned about and that the US is looking into what kind of treatments and vaccines are available. The World Health Organization's identified about 80 infections globally, with around 50 more suspected of contracting the disease. In sport, England's Matt Fitzpatrick is in with a real chance of landing his first golf major. He's tied for second going into the final round of the US PGA Championship, three shots behind Chile's Mito Pereira. And Fitzpatrick is confident he can handle the pressure of the big occasion. I feel like whenever I've had a chance in, in Europe, I've, I've played very well. And yeah, it, I'm more just looking forward to it more than anything. You know, it's, it's a chance to win and I'll happily go tee off now if we can. <laughs> And Rangers are celebrating winning the Scottish Cup for the first time in 13 years. They needed extra time, but eventually beat Hearts 2-0 in the showpiece at Hampden Park. That's the latest. I'm Kieran Bangle. At Tesco Mobile, get our incredible value sim. 30 gigs of data for just £11 a month with club card prices. And with 99% UK network coverage, you can scroll, stream, swipe and like wherever you want. Nuts, right? This is Supermarket Mobile. Search Tesco Mobile. Every little helps. Ends 25th of May. What's £12.50? Saving £1.50 monthly. Club card, 24-month contract and unlocked 4G enabled phone required. 99% UK 4G population coverage across the UK. Fair use policy applies. Charges and terms at tescomobile.com slash terms. Like a Radio 1458 and Like a Gold 1035. A part of the Like a Group. Leica Radio Weather is brought to you by TravelUp.com. Our lowest prices are guaranteed only when you book directly through TravelUp.com or call 0207 580 5000. The weather today is Sunday 22nd of May 2022. Sun intervals and gentle breeze in London and surrounding areas. Top temperature 23 centigrade. Sunset is at 8.55 p.m. Weather was brought to you by TravelUp.com. Our lowest prices are guaranteed only when you book directly through TravelUp.com. Like a radio. Talking points with Keith Vaz. Celebrating diversity. Like a London. Like a radio. Good morning and welcome to the 111th edition of Talking Points on Like a Radio with me, Keith Vaz. I hope you're enjoying your day so far with Like a Radio. Thank you for joining us today, Sunday, the 22nd of May 2022. I hope you're having a great weekend. Happy birthday this week to Churchill Alamo from Goa, to Farad Khan from Wembley, to Barty JC from Rashi Mead, and to Dan Arimia from Pietra Nemsk. And of course, today is the birthday of my beloved wife, Maria. Happy birthday to you, Maria. It was reported last week that the extreme rise in energy prices had seen a 40-year UK high inflation rate of nearly 9%. This increase has meant that for the average home, the cost of energy has risen to nearly £2,000 a year. But on the bright side, last week's Eurovision Song Contest took place in Turin in Italy, where the United Kingdom, represented by TikTok star, come singing sensation Sam Ryder, managed to finish in a spectacular spectacular second place with his song Spaceman. How many times have we watched the Eurovision Song Contest and we've either got nil point or we were last but one. He lost out eventually to the winner, the Kalish Orchestra representing Ukraine with their song Stefania. 
congratulations to Ukraine. On the program today, we will be talking to my special guest, starting in Mumbai with fashion designer Saba Khan, about the rising fashion culture in India and indeed about her own label. We're then going to Leicester to talk to Vishal Joshi, one of the rising stars of the creative arts industry, who started in marketing and has now followed his passion to become a very famous artist. Finally, we're in London with the experienced pharmacist, indeed she's a superintendent pharmacist, Leela Thakara from Moore Park. She's going to give us an update about the situation surrounding COVID-19 vaccinations and the continued importance of getting our boosters. But before all that, let's hear some music. Mm-hmm. 
के रांझा ये तबाह हो गया के रांझा ये तबाह हो गया हीरे नी नशा तेरा करके ना पूछ हम क्या हो गया के रांझा ये तबाह हो गया Talking points with Keith Vaz, celebrating diversity. Leica, London. Welcome back. This is Talking Points with Keith Vaz on Leica Radio. I hope you enjoyed the music. India boasts many fashion houses, but Italy and Milan, in particular, are the centres of the fashion world. But could that all change as a result of the dreams and sheer hard work of our next guest, who's become something of a poster girl for fashion in India? Let's go to Mumbai and talk to fashion designer Saba Khan Nayak. She's been in the fashion scene since the age of only 19. And in 2010, she was selected for the Lakmi India Fashion Week, a point from which she has really not stopped rising. Saba's work is inspired by her surroundings in Mumbai and is often in support of a cause. We speak to her now about her career so far and her big plans for the future. Good morning, Saba, or should I say good afternoon as you're talking to us from Mumbai? Good afternoon, Keith. Now, Saba, you have been involved in fashion since you were only 19. When did you know that you wanted to be involved in fashion? Was it from a very young age or was it a sudden conversion? It was actually from a very young age, although professionally I've been working in fashion since I was 19. However, I feel the love for fashion was inculcated in me very early on by my nan when we used to live in London because uh, she was a brilliant pattern maker and she used to sell dresses for me every day and you know I literally used to dress up in a new dress and I think early on that was the influence. Later on um, when we moved to India my dad Mr. Salman Ahmed Khan he has a media and advertising agency Makers Multimedia and my mother designer stylist Shabana Khan. So they served as two very influential factors when it came to a creative influence. So I always kind of grew up around you know fabrics, I grew up around creativity, you know Mm. media work going on, advertising going on. So it kind of, you know, you do sort of get into mm. it. And I didn't really think that I'd make a career out of it until, you know, of course, things took a turn and, you know, there was a dramatic way of me getting involved into fashion. And yeah, that, that was like the starting point, I'd say. Now, your first solo collection was done with the guidance of the International Institute of Fashion Design at Tandiri, which is the school where you studied your first degree in fashion design. What was it like working with such a very famous institution and how excited were you at the prospect of having your own collection? Well, honestly, when I did join INIC, I did not ever think that I would be given such a huge opportunity and such a big platform because the reason why I joined the fashion course was that I'm actually a major in psychology. I had a lot of free time on hand and I thought that, you know what, I'm good at sketching, I'm good with styling, I'm, you know, good with fashion. Let me just go and do something and, you know, use my time productively. But the directors of the Institute, the Vixer and Mamta Mam, they really thought, that I had a lot of potential and they really said that, you know what, we're having this platform for, you know, students and I feel like you should apply. And they really did urge me and they did definitely bring out the best in me because that was when I did my debut collection, which was no class, inspired by ages second largest slum, Dharavi. And that literally made uh, history because uh, the fact that at that time, His Royal Highness Prince of Wales, Prince Charles, had also written a book about Dharavi, which was called Harmony. And when I wrote to him, it correlated the fact that I had also done a collection on something so similar. I did mm-hmm. receive a lot of encouragement from him and he also felt that that would be a good sustainable model for, you know, British towns that they could follow. That's amazing, having the endorsement of the next King of England. But the world has embraced the concept of the house, the house of Gucci, of Tom Ford, of Dior, to name but a few. Yours, Sabashi by Saba Khan, is your own label. I mean, at your age, you've actually got your own label. How different is your label and your fashion house, because that's what it is, compared to the ones that come from Italy? Mumbai is actually 
quite synonymous the scene is with the, the Bollywood fashion. So I feel like the concept of the house is still a long way to come to India because of the fact that the Indian fashion industry is still in its emergent stage and it's not reached the level of becoming a world fashion capital just yet. But um, I'm sure that eventually, you know, Indian designers will take note of this and they will uh, kind of bring the Indian fashion onto the global scene. Recently, Anita Dongre received uh, international investment and she opened a store in New York. She's an Indian designer and uh, she crossed the revenue of around $130 million. So I feel like, you know, that is setting the stage and in future things will be different in India, specifically in Mumbai. We're going to take a short break now. When we come back, we're going to continue our fascinating conversation with Sabah Khan about her fashion career, an Indian woman with her own label. Join us after the break. सस्ती से सस्ती फ्लाइट्स और हॉलिडे पैकेज चाहिए तो 2400 घंटे सातों दिन किसी भी समय ट्रैवल हब का नंबर मिलाइए फॉर द क्रूज टेलर मेड हॉलिडे होटल बुकिंग्स एंड हनीमून पैकेजेस हमसे सस्ता कहीं नहीं मिल सकता कॉल ट्रैवल हब 24/7 और 0208782883 ट्रैवल हब ltd.co.uk ट्रैवल हब बेस्ट सर्विस विद अनबीटेबल प्राइस एट ऑल प्रोटेक्टेड विजिट ट्रैवल हब ltd.co.uk Grace Entertainment presents the return of Suniti Johan live in the UK. On Sunday the 10th of July 2022 at the Eventim Apollo London. For tickets contact Video Rama on 0208 907 0116 or via Ticketmaster and Eventim. Suniti Johan UK tour radio partner like a radio. Like a Mobile is offering great discounts on their current plans. There's a whopping 50% off on selected great value plans for the first 3 months with your online orders. Lots of data with additional data bonuses on auto renewals to share the moments that matter to you with your loved ones. With unlimited UK calls, texts and 100 international minutes to India and 40 other countries. Stay connected with high quality coverage and EU roaming included. Try Like a today and connect your world. Visit likeamobile.co.uk and grab one of our amazing plans with 50 percent off today. T's and C's apply. Offer valid till 31st of May. Like a mobile. Ram Skesh and Carry Edge Wear. R for reasonable. A for affordable. M for money saver. And S for satisfaction. Ram Skesh and Carry Ni Bhai Edge Wear Ma Bola Bala. UK se Pakistan mein bills pay karne ka sabse befikir tarika. Jante hai? Befikir mobile app. Download Befikir app today or visit b a y f i k r dot net. Ever tasted a lychee ice cream? Try it at Scoop Herb on Ealing Road, Alperton or Rainers Lane, Harrow. Hi, I'm Kashmir. Some call me the land of lakes. Some call me a paradise on earth. But I am also the land of blood. And my truth is finally out. This is my story. The story of Kashmir. Watch the most talked about film of the year, The Kashmir Files. Available in Hindi, Tamil, Telugu, Kannada and also in English. Premiering on the 25th of May on Z5. Subscribe now and get 50% off on annual pack. बेक्सली हीथ के अली भवन जाइए तो आपका पेट कभी नहीं रहेगा खाली क्योंकि वहाँ मिलता है थाली इंडियन और श्रीलंकन ट्रेडिशनल फेस्टिवल फुल वेजिटेरियन सेट मील जिसमें शामिल है पापडम वडा एंड पायसम स्पेशली मेड विद एरोमेटिक बासमती राइस एंड आर्ट ऑफ फ्लावर चपाती एंड इलेवन आइटम्स ऑफ वेजिटेरियन करीज एंड साइड एक्सक्लूसिवली मेड फॉर अली भवन एंड अवेलेबल इन स्टोर एवरी फ्राइडे एंड सैटरडे फॉर जस्ट सेवन पाउंड फिफ्टी अली भवन इट्स ऑल अबाउट फूड The latest listening figures are in. Like a radio's audience figures have gone up and it's being listened by more of you. We thank you for making Like a Radio your number one. Your number one. The personalities that matter with Keith Vaz on Talking Points. Like a Radio. Welcome back. This is Talking Points with Keith Vaz on Like a Radio. I'm having a fascinating conversation with one of the poster girls of the Indian fashion industry, Saba Khan Nayak. Saba, you work in Mumbai, so therefore your work is definitely going to be influenced by that great city. 
What is it about Mumbai that is so inspirational to you? I mean, um, Mumbai is a city with a heart, you know, it's the New York of India. It's um, a city where all your dreams can come true. You can really think big and it is going to happen. And honestly, when I moved to Mumbai, I was quite young. I remember this instance. I was at the airport. I saw this lady clad in a crop top. It was actually a blouse and a sari. At that point, I didn't know what it was. You know, it was just so fascinating. From the moment I stepped at the airport, I, I told my mom, I was like, oh my God, I saw, you know, this lady and she's in this sari. And, uh, you know, I think, is she a witch? She's got witches in India. So I feel like as a young kid, you know, when I moved here, everything was so fascinating, right from, you know, the children on the streets they're like trying to send you balloons and toys and this and that and everything was so colorful and so vibrant like we don't get to see that kind of stuff back home in London and you know that kind of became a very impressionable age that kind of etched into my memory and you know when it came time to draw inspiration I couldn't think of anything better than the city that I lived in so everything right from the Dabbawala to the Chai Wala you get great cut in chai on the street all the the Machiwali ladies so they're like coolies and they're women who collect fish. So everything is so inspirational in this city that, you know, I, mm. could, I could actually go on about it. Mm. Now, in respect of your fashion and designs that make, does help someone really famous wore one of your pieces of work? I'm thinking of um, a Meghan Markle or a Priyanka Chopra or Ashwari Rai. If one of these suddenly came out wearing a Saba Khan special, does that help with your label, do you think? Yes, definitely. It does help because I remember back in the day when I was doing the Lakme India Fashion Week shows, I had Sonam Kapoor wearing one of my garments from my collection, the rickshaw collection called Tuk Tuk. In another instance, I had the diva of Indian cinema, Madhuri Dixit, wearing uh, one of the collections from Dorothy. And that does uh, generate a lot of curiosity in the customers and the clients. And it does help, you know, in getting your collection into stores and it, it does prove it into a factor of commercially, you know, viable because they see that you can wear it off the ramp as well. And it's just not, you know, for the ramp. It's, they look up to these uh, figures and these personalities. So it does translate into business as well. Sevagon, do you think that Mumbai is ever going to rival Milan or Paris or dare I say it, London as one of the big fashion centres of the world? Because obviously there is a huge market out there in India and Indian men and women love fashion. But some don't see Mumbai in the same light as those other capital cities. Do you think that we are going to get there with Mumbai? And what needs to happen for Mumbai to be right out in front at the top of the fashion pile? So what I feel is that definitely Mumbai has the potential, like 100% it's got it. But the problem is that Mumbai is not able to you know, move away from the aspect of Bollywood. What's happened is that, you know, fashion has just become synonymous with Bollywood and we need to look above and beyond that in order to introduce ourselves onto the global map because of the fact that Bollywood is limited to India. Not everyone is aware of the personalities or the celebrities that are here and that's where, you know, our limitation sets in. So we need to look at a more global audience. We need to look at global personalities. You know, we need to look at like sports personalities and so on and so forth. And I feel like we've definitely got the potential. I'm optimistic with the... And uh, also the fact that there are a lot of creative individuals, there are a lot of designers, but they don't have the backing of corporate brands and multinationals. So when mm. that happens, you know, people will, the designers will have the capital to produce larger collections and, you know, eventually become, as you said in your earlier question, a house of... Sabah Khan, it's been fascinating talking to you. I can hear the excitement and enthusiasm in what you were saying. I look forward to a day when I can walk down Sloan Square and along with Gucci, Ferrucci, Dior and Chanel, we see a Sabashi shop, which is your label, where people can go Aww. in and see the best of Indian fashion. So thank you for joining us. We always ask our special guests to choose a song that means something special to them and to dedicate it to a special person. Which song would you like to choose and who would you like to dedicate it to? Well, my current favourite is Pasuri from Coke Studio and I'd like to dedicate it to my mum, Shabana Khan, who's also been my mentor and my brother, Arsalan Khan, who's also been a massive support in my career. And I just want to say thank you so much, Keith, for having me on the programme and the best wishes to all the Leica Radio listeners. Let's hear Saba Khan's song. Agal 
ਲਾਵਾ ਮਜਬੂਰੀ ਨੂੰ ਆਣ ਜਾਣ ਦੀ ਪਸੂੜੀ ਨੂੰ ਜ਼ਹਿਰ ਬਣੇ ਹਾਂ ਤੇਰੀ ਕੇ ਜਾਵਾ ਮੈਂ ਪੂਰੀ ਨੂੰ ਆਣਾ ਸੀ ਉਹ ਨਹੀਂ ਆਇਆ ਦਿਲ ਬਾਗ ਬਾਗ ਮੇਰਾ ਟਕਰਾਇਆ ਕਾਗਾ ਬੋਲ ਕੇ ਦੱਸ ਜਾਵੇ ਪਾਵਾ ਕਿਉ ਦੀ ਚੂਰੀ ਨੂੰ ਰਾਵਾ ਚ ਬਾਵਾ ਚ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਲੁਕਾਵਾ ਕੋਈ ਮਨੂ ਨਾ ਰੋਕੇ ਮੇਰੇ ਡੋਲ ਜੁਗਾਇਆ ਦੀ ਤੈਨੂੰ ਖਬਰ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਹੋਵੇ ਆ ਜਾਏ ਦਿਲ ਤੇਰਾ ਪੂਰਾ ਵੀ ਨਾ ਹੋਵੇ ਆ ਬਣਿਆ ਬਣਾਇਆ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਬਾਤ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਹੋਵੇ ਆ ਜਾਏ ਦਿਲ ਤੇਰਾ ਪੂਰਾ ਵੀ ਨਾ ਹੋਵੇ ਭੁੱਲ ਗਈ ਮਜਬੂਰੀ ਨੂੰ ਦੁਨੀਆ ਦੀ ਦਸਤੂਰੀ ਨੂੰ ਸਾਥ ਤੇਰਾ ਹੈ ਬਤੇਰਾ ਪੂਰ ਕਰ ਜ਼ਰੂਰੀ ਨੂੰ This is Talking Points with Keith Faz on Like a Radio. Let's stick to the theme of arts, which of course included fashion, and go to Burstall in the East Midlands and talk to my next guest, Vishal Joshi. Vishal is a fine artist who won the Leicester Society of Artists 2017 Artist of the Year Prize for his sketching. He also recently sold his portrait of the world-renowned mixed martial arts champion, Conor McGregor, to Notorious himself. We'll be speaking to him about the origins of his passion for painting, the inspirations for his work, and of course, the very famous Conor McGregor portrait. Good morning, Vishal Joshi. Good morning, Keith Vaz. How are you? I am very well. Vishal, where did your love of painting begin? I suppose it was my childhood, really. My mum and my brother were always very inspirational. Uh, when I was little, they'd, my mum was a teacher's assistant, so she'd bring home some amazing work. And my brother, he was studying his GCSEs when I was about seven or eight, and started his kind of his good work 
And yeah, I, my, my level of what was, that my standard was set by them. So I just played to that, really. Now, that's a kind of unusual profession for people like mm. you and me. Did mother and father run around saying you've got to be a doctor or a lawyer or a financial expert when you said, actually, I like art? It never really came up. It was just something that I was naturally quite good at and I seemed to do better there than anywhere else. It seemed like a natural transition. And I mean, my choice for career came a lot later than um, I started practicing as an artist. So I learned as a kid and then I figured out that I was good at it when I was in my teens, late teens. I only decided mm. my career, you know, before university. Um, but I had other plans. I just seemed to favor art and happiness over financial, you know, benefit. Mm. Now, you studied fine art at Wimbledon School of Art and then moved into a career in marketing. What pulled you back to painting after being someone who was actually dealing, by and large, with PR? Being happy, really, with what I do. Um, I knew I wasn't being the best version of myself. I, mm. you know, it was just a Sunday where I quit and I realized I didn't want to do this again. I don't want to carry on working again and have to wait six or seven more days until I can have some time for myself. So, and I was working quite hard, you know, but I wasn't benefiting in the ways I wasn't becoming happy. I was just becoming more stable in life and it, it wasn't satisfying so I decided to pull the trigger and let go of that idea and the ideals I had and I to follow my passion instead. Mm. What would you describe as the influences upon you? I am just at the moment transfixed with a Netflix series on the Medici family. I don't know whether you've seen mm -hmm. it. And in those times, no. Renaissance times, of course, artists depended very much on having patrons to support their work. Botticelli, Michelangelo, mm -hmm. uh, Leonardo da Vinci. Mm -hmm. Who is your biggest influence, do you think, in terms of the art that you do? Which artist? influence you the most? It's hard to say as an artist. I, I have a great um, admiration for Renaissance artists because they, they taught me the basics like uh, Chiara Scuro, Caravaggio, Michelangelo. They taught mm. about light and shade and how to interpret colour hot and cold colours. Degas was a huge influence and then more recently people like Frank Arba, Jenny Saville and uh, Lucien Freud. These people were hugely influential but there was a lot of modern, like, very modern artists like Paul Wright and Jenny Saville, Mike Lonovich. There was a several artists, but I think I, I pick and select from my inspirations technically, and I and I feel like I've I've learned the basics. I learned to master the the bread and butter sort of thing. And then I go and play around and get technically creative with what else I can do. But my biggest inspiration mm. comes from philosophy and life itself, so I can try and symbolise my thoughts and feelings with these techniques. This is Keith Vaz on Talking Points on Like a Radio. I'm talking to the renowned artist Vishal Joshi about his art, his craft, and his passion. We're going to take a short break. We're going to be back to talk to him some more. Like a Radio. Flight updates are brought to you by TravelUp.com. Flights, hotels, and holidays. Let's go for a flight update. All flights are as scheduled, but please check with your flight operators before heading to the airport. Flight updates were brought to you by TravelUp.com. Lowest prices are guaranteed only when you book directly through TravelUp.com. Call 0207 580 5000. Like a radio. Traffic and travel. Hi, Michael Page. Just a reminder to start, the M4 remains closed both ways between Junction 6 for Sloughan Windsor and 8 9 for Maidenhead until tomorrow morning because of Highways England Works this weekend. It's still queuing on the M4 Heathrow Spur, heading into the airport, coming from the main carriageway at Junction 4, and in East London at Poplar, the East India Dock Road heading into town has a lane blocked by an accident at Sturry Street, but traffic's coping well. On the tubes, engineering work this weekend means there's no service on the entire Hammersmith and City Line, and the district line isn't running between Tower Hill and West Ham. There are replacement buses running between Tower Hill and Barking. There's also no service on the district line between Earls Court and Olympia. And that's the latest traffic and travel. OK, everybody. We need to stop taking on new patients. Sarah's dental practice is expanding to cope with demand, so there are roles that urgently need filling. But we can refer people to our new practice when it's ready. Indeed can help her find great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. Screen for quality candidates using Indeed assessments to make sure they have the experience your job needs. To start hiring, visit indeed.com slash try today. This is Like a Radio. Your dream holiday will be departing soon. Please make your way to the gate. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. Welcome on board. Sit back and enjoy your Let's flight go. to paradise. We've missed these sounds, so let us book your next dream holiday. 
Call City Bond Holidays today on 0207 290 0616. We are at all protected. Celebrate all your special moments with Haldirams. Your most loved Haldirams sweets are made in the UK. Now available at Sainsbury's and Asian grocery stores across the country. You can also order online at www.haldiramuk.com. Rams Cash and Carry Mollison Way Edgeware. Gujarat ni lok priya ghar samagri hove London ma. Ghar betha Gujarat itle. Rams Cash and Carry ni bhai Edgeware ma. Leica Mobile's £12 National Plan Extra is now just £6 for three months. Yes, just £6. You get 20 GB of data, unlimited UK minutes and texts, 100 international minutes to India and 40 other countries, plus 5 GB bonus data on auto renewals when you buy online at leicamobile.co.uk. EU roaming included. Half price sale is now on. Don't miss this great limited time offer. Visit leicamobile.co.uk today. TNC supply. Offer valid to the 31st of May. Leica Mobile. Witness the grandness of Ram Charan, the charisma of Junior NTR, and the visual opulence of SS Rajamouli's magnum opus. A story that left the world in awe and wonder. Watch India's biggest blockbuster, RRR, and enjoy its real maza in Tamil, Telugu, Kannada, and Malayalam. Streaming now on Z5. Subscribe now. Bexley Heat's Ali Bhavan now brings you Thali, an Indian and Sri Lankan traditional festive full vegetarian set meal with papadom, vada and payasam. Specially made with aromatic basmati rice and after flour chapati with 11 items of vegetarian curries and sides. Exclusively made for Ali Bhavan and available in store every Friday and Saturday for just £7.50. Ali Bhavan, it's all about food. Ever tasted a Kaju Thruksh ice cream? Try it at Scoop Herb on Ealing Road, Alperton or Rainers Lane, Harrow. State Bank of India UK announces its business open day at the East Ham branch. Walk into SBI UK East Ham branch at 149 to 153 High Street North, 9.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Thursday the 26th of May. Apply for a business account today with SBI UK and enjoy great rates on both borrowing and saving. Come and meet our business banking team and discuss all your business requirements, why to let loans and loans against investment properties. It's SBI UK business open day at the East Ham branch on Thursday the 26th of May. TNCs apply. Talking Points with Keith Vaz Celebrating diversity Leica London Welcome back, this is Talking Points with Keith Vaz on Leica Radio I'm talking to the renowned artist Vishal Joshi About his career, his passion and his influences It's not something that we discuss very often on Leica Radio So it's very nice to hear about a famous Asian artist Vishal your work is incredibly varied, as well as painting, you design, you do sculptures, and also, of course, you've done windows for sari shops, as I saw your display at the Anuki sari shop on the Belgrave Road. What inspires you to do these different things? Because they're quite varied, aren't they? I love I love variety. It's um, To me, it helps me stay creative, and I guess if I did the same thing again and again, even I'd get bored, and I'm sure the public would too. For me, the biggest test of being an artist is to always remain creative, and I think that's the, the role of an artist. You know, it's not a typical nine-to-five, and I'm blessed the fact that I am a, able to do a variety of work, and that's why a big reason why my, my title is fine artist, not sculptor, painter, or, you know, any particular mm. type of artisan. I love the variance, and that's and the inspiration kind of... It, halfway because inspiration can be from anywhere and it could come out anywhere. You've got a thing about hands, haven't you? I've seen in a lot of your work the use of hands. Where did this interest in hands come from? Um, by by a deep philosophy that I've been touring for a while and originally it became something I used to symbolise my own thoughts. When I realised when I was painting portraits of people that Faces just where your eyes, nose, mouth, ears are located, and we happen to speak to that area of it and use that to symbolize that person. But the way we experience the world is through our hands. I use this hand symbol to symbolize all of humanity and our connection with the planet and each other. Vishal, obviously your interest in art is very wide, and there are lots of people who are listening to this program, young people, who 
may want a career in art and there may be influences in their families telling them this is not the right thing to do, you can't make a living out of it. What would be your message to all those budding artists who'd like to follow you but perhaps they don't have the kind of support that you had? It's, it sounds a bit extreme but it's do or die and happen to live your life. If your one thing that you want to do is to be an artist and you happen to do that, then everything else comes secondary. If you want that uh, life where you can buy everything and have all these things, then maybe focus on that first and the finances and maybe art's not the right thing for you. If you happen to think where well, I want to be happy more than anything else, then focus on what makes you happy, then work everything else in afterwards. I'm not suggesting that you don't make money because you have to eventually, you know, think about life and paying for everything. And I do certainly do that too. But at first, it wasn't very easy. I'd say the first three years, I was lucky if I broke even. And I was lucky that I had a bit of savings. And it was all about time and place. You make a move that's risky and it only pays off if you have things around you, you know, like safety nets financially and even time towards becoming better. Vishal Joshi, I should ask you this last question very quickly, very briefly. If there was one piece of art in the world that you have seen that you could have in your house in Burstall or in your garden in Burstall in the East Midlands and they allow you to keep it for, well, a month, <laughs> which one piece of art would you like to have there? Portrait of a Boy by Jenny Saville and it had this beautiful teal blue in his face and that inspired me so much when I was in my teens. And I'd love to it every now and again it reminds me just the brush strokes it's just absolutely well they actually laid them out and to the colors i'd say it was that painting or anything by jenny saville something like that around you mm. something inspiring okay well that's encouraged me to go and have a look at her work i probably have the eiffel tower in my garden actually in terms of pieces of art um, because i think it's still <laughs> a spectacular piece of art uh, vishal joshi you are an inspiration to all those budding artists who may want to give up but you've encouraged us today to get us to continue thank you for talking talking about this very important subject and the best of luck in your future career. Thank you, Mr. Vaz, and thank you to all the listeners of Like A Radio.
Coca's noodles. You mean Coca, the king of noodles? Coca means delicious. Variety of flavors available in Coca packet, Coca cup, and Coca bowl noodles. Suitable for vegetarians and halal approved. The king of noodles, Coca noodles, packets, cups, and bowls now available everywhere in the UK. Hasu Diagnostics provides RT-PCR travel and self-assured COVID testing. Visit hasudiagnostics.com or call 0300-124-6500. जिसको सबकी खुशी का है ख्याल क्या है उसके दिल का हाल मिली अनुपमा से अनुपमा मंडे टू सैटरडे 8 पी एम ऑन सब प्लस अवेलेबल ऑन स्काई सेवन जीरो फाइव वर्जन मीडिया एट जीरो थ्री एंड यप टीवी पाकिस्तान पैसे भिजवाने का सबसे बेफिक्र तरीका बेफिक्र मोबाइल ऐप डाउनलोड बेफिक्र ऐप टुडे और विजिट बी ए वाई एफ आई के आर डॉट नेट फोर्टींथ ऑगस्ट जश्न आजादी इस बार होगा यादगार ब्रॉडवे सिटी ग्वादर प्रेजेंट पाकिस्तान सेवेंटी फिफ्थ जश्न आजादी सेलिब्रेशन विद लाइव परफॉर्मेंसेज बाय उस्ताद शफका तमानत अली खान आरिफ लोहार वि टीम एंड सनम मारवी बिलाल सईद फरहान सईद आयमा बेग हुमायमा मलिक साई जहूर ऑन संडे फोर्टींथ ऑगस्ट एट ओबोरीना वेम्बली लंडन टिकट फ्रॉम फिफ्टीन पाउंड ओनली बुक योर सीट नाउ एट ओबोरीना डॉट को डॉट यू के फॉर मोर इन Information call zero seven eight five zero seven four two one four three. Media partners like a radio and like a gold. Brought to you by Samara Events UK. बेक्सली हीथ के अली भवन जाइए तो आपका पेट कभी नहीं रहेगा खाली क्योंकि वहाँ मिलता है थाली इंडियन और श्रीलंकन ट्रेडिशनल फेस्टिवल फुल वेजिटेरियन सेट मील जिसमें शामिल है पापडम वडा एंड पायसम स्पेशली मेड विद एरोमेटिक बासमती राइस एंड आर्ट ऑफ फ्लावर चपाती एंड इलेवन आइटम्स ऑफ वेजिटेरियन करीज एंड साइड एक्सक्लूसिवली मेड फॉर अली भवन एंड अवेलेबल इन स्टोर एवरी फ्राइडे एंड सैटरडे फॉर जस्ट सेवन पाउंड फिफ्टी अली भवन इट्स ऑल अबाउट फूड Ever tasted a Sita Fall ice cream? Try it at Scoop Herb on Ealing Road, Alberton, or Rainers Lane, Harrow. Flight Path Travel. We are agents of our customers to help you get the best travel solutions for worldwide travel for air ticket, RTPCR, hotel, tour, and visa. Call now on zero two zero three four six three double seven double eight. The personalities that matter with Keith Vaz on Talking Points. Like a radio. Welcome back. This is Talking Points with Keith Vaz on Like a Radio. Do you ever wonder what happened about the COVID vaccination program? For our final guest today, let's go to Moor Park in North London to speak to Leela Fakra, a prominent pharmacist. Indeed, she was awarded an MBE by Her Majesty the Queen for her work on pharmacy in 2012. Current statistics show that over 53 million people have received their first COVID-19 jabs, but only around 40 million have had their second jabs and boosters. We'll be talking with Leela about the current situation surrounding the COVID-19 vaccines in the UK. Some misinformation. Information is out there about vaccines, and also how do we encourage more people to get their boosters? She joins me this morning from Moor Park. Good morning, Leela Thakra, MBE. Good morning, Keith. Thank you for having me. First, can I thank you and your colleagues for all the incredible work that you have done during the pandemic? I know people centre on hospitals, nurses, and doctors. Of course, they've done a marvellous job, but also so have pharmacists. So thank you for everything that you and your colleagues have done. Especially my colleagues who have spent long hours working, unsociable hours as well. Up to 14 hours a day so it's been a joint effort it's been a team effort Leela is the vaccination process still going on because we hear very little about this process anymore Yes, the vaccination service is still commissioned by the NHS. Uh, currently, the emphasis on, is on the over 75s to have their spring boosters. So they've had their first, second and third, and it's been three months since their third vaccination. They are due for a spring booster. So there's only two categories of people that are allowed to have the spring booster, which is the over 75s and for anyone who's immunosuppressed. And of mm. course, the ones that haven't had their first, second or the first booster yet. 
how do people actually get these appointments? Because, of course, when it started, you had to go to the hubs. Mm -hmm. You then went to your GPs. You then could get it done by pharmacists. Mm -hmm. Is it, again, a question of booking nationally or do you do it locally? For example, those people who live in London. So there's two ways of getting your vaccination done. You can either go through the NHS national booking system. So you provide your NHS number, your date of birth, and you look at all the sites that are available to you. You put in your postcode and whatever vaccinating site are there, it will give you the option to book with them. There'll be different days and times that are available, or you can walk into a vaccinating site like where we are at the moment. You walk in without an appointment. So it's what they call a grab -a jet service, and it's run by the NHS. Mm. Now, as we all know, there are several different vaccines out there. Mm -hmm. When we began the process of vaccination, people were told what vaccinations they should get. Mm. Is that still the case? And now you vaccinated thousands of people. Is there actually any difference between AstraZeneca, Pfizer and Moderna? So the two main vaccines that are provided by the NHS are uh, Pfizer and Moderna. AstraZeneca was one of the initial vaccines that was given. Um, that's been phased off. So currently it's the Pfizer and the Moderna. They both are identical vaccines made by two different companies and the mRNA vaccine. There isn't much difference between the two. Final question. Are we going to be in a situation where we're going to have to have these vaccines every single year um, to deal with the various strains? Because, of course, when we started with COVID and the vaccination process, it was to deal with a particular strain and, and yeah. then the strains change because obviously this they mutate. Yeah. Do you think we as the public are going to have to get used to this for the rest of our lives? Um, this is a decision that's going to be made by the JCI. It's very much in the decision stage at the moment. It's very much planning stages. It looks likely that we may be having an autumn booster with the flu vaccinations in September onwards. Now, what happens afterwards depends on how the strains are, are changing, what the JCVI guidance is and how rapidly the, the pandemic is spreading or whether it becomes an epidemic and how the virus is actually contained. So it's the situation that's going to be assessed by the WHO and the JCVI. Leela Thakra, MBE, thank you so much for joining us from North London for Moore Park. Thank you for the work that you and your colleagues are doing on a daily, indeed hourly basis. And all I can say is keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. And thanks for having me and especially to Leica Radio for the opportunity to share the crucial message that we have regarding the COVID vaccination service. This is a very, very vital message for the ones that haven't had their first doses, their second doses and their third doses. Please go out, find a site that's vaccinating, book yourself an appointment or even walk in without an appointment. There are scores of sites that are vaccinating without appointments, but do please get vaccinated. It's very crucial you need to protect yourself and the people around you. That is a very important message. Thank you. Let's get 
Talking points like her. That's it for this week. Time's up. My thanks to Sabah Khan Nayak, Vishal Joshi, and Leela Thakra. Special thanks to my production assistant, Dan, producer Rupi, and my editor, Adam. To end today's program, we'll be listening to the song from the movie called Bull Balaya 2, starring Katik Aryan, which has over 1.2 million views on YouTube. Please stay tuned to Like a Radio for the rest of the day. This has been Talking Points on Like a Radio with Keith Vaz, broadcasting from London. Have a great Sunday.
Across London on 1458 AM and DAB.